Elite TMs are coming soon to Pokemon Go. What is an Elite TM? Well, it's a TM that can allow your Pokemon to learn any move from its move pool, including event moves and legacy moves. Legacy move pool is kind of limited. Uh, not every single legacy move is included. We'll talk about that. Um, but it does seem like many legacy moves are going to be part of the Elite TMs, which is nice. The first implementation of Elite Charge TMs, right now appears that it's going to be the Elite Charge TM specifically, is going to be with the Alakazam Community Day. It's going to be part of this box, so you have to buy it. Uh, so purchasing this Elite TM. You can get these TMs for free apparently though, if you achieve at least rank 10 in the Go Battle League for each season. You get it as a end of season reward. So there are free to play access for these TMs. Right now it appears that they are also monetizing them as well. Given that these Elite TMs are gonna be a limited resource, you're gonna wanna make the usage of them actually count. And for that reason, I decided to compile a list of Pokemon that are going to be ideal, optimized, for the usage of elite TMs, both charge and fast move TMs. And if you're curious, this does cover every single PVP league and raids as well. So I got all that content up in here for you guys on elite TMs. One thing I do want to emphasize at the beginning of this video, and I'm going to talk about it at the end, is uh, saving your Elite TMs and not using them right away. Because the future does come, Pokemon get move pool updates, upgrades, and uh, you know, if you already got something powered up for you know raids or PvP, it's really good IV spread, all that kind of stuff, uh, you don't want to have to build a new one. Just dropping that TM on them could be a nice route as well. So don't buy into the hype too much. I definitely suggest saving the TMs unless you got something picked out already. At any rate, let's get into it. If you want a list of the moves available for Elite TMs, there is a list on GamePress. Uh, from what it appears, the Game Master has been tweaked since the initial data mine of what moves are going to be for the Elite TMs. Some legacy moves have been removed, uh, so this list may be revised over the course of time. So I definitely suggest checking out this page before you use any of your Elite TMs because it would definitely suck if you were trying to get uh, Ominous Wind on Golbat, for example, and then it didn't show up because it was a legacy move, not an event move, and Niantic, for whatever reason, decided to remove it after they released their Game Master with it in it. So uh, definitely check this page and you know ask questions from other people before spending your precious Elite TMs because uh, it, you might not be getting them back, you know what I'm saying? Even cooler, PV Poke put out an article about a week ago, uh, both these pages by the way, linked in the description, talking about the best Elite TM candidates for PvP. If there's anybody that's going to know what's up with these Elite TMs, it's going to be the person running the best simulator for PvP, right? And uh, he highlights two really good ones in the beginning that I think are overall the best candidates for PvP when it comes to the Elite Charge TMs, and that is Dugong and Zapdos. When it comes to Zapdos, more specifically, Shadow Zapdos. So what's up with Dugong? Well, Dugong has two legacy moves. It has the legacy fast move Ice Shard and the legacy charge move Icy Wind. So for those of you that are familiar with Lapras and its performance, Frost Breath, doesn't cut it. You definitely need to have the Ice Shard, and for those of you that are familiar with uh, Articuno or Cloyster, Icy Wind is definitely an all-powerful move in Pokemon Go right now. It just does a lot of damage, and it debuffs the Pokemon at the same time. What more could you want from an attack? So at a base, this makes Dugong sound like a more impressive version of Lapras, but its swag gets even cooler. If you scroll down, through the matchups here, you can see that it's doing the anti-flyer job. It's able to beat, you know, Altaria, Mantine, Togekiss, Tropius, Skarmory. So flying types beaten by the Dugong here. But it's doing some other stuff too. It beats other grass type Pokemon, such as Shiftry. And then it's also beating the Azumarill, which is kind of nuts. And you scroll down a little bit more and you see that it's beating Umbreon. It's beating Cresselia. Like, what the heck? This... Ice-type Pokemon, just doing Ice-type damage, is beating all sorts of Pokemon, which is kind of insane here. Now, when it comes to the Azumarill, you might be quick to notice, okay, that's against Ice Beam Hydro Pump Azumarill. That's not very fair. And if you pull up the matchup, it does look kind of close. You might be thinking, what about Play Rough? Play Rough might be better. Well, if you go with Play Rough, Dugong is still winning. Now, those of you that are familiar with PV Poke might be aware, hey, Ryan Swag, these are the default simulations. This isn't the best possible Azumarill ever. Well, I can maximize it. That is the rank one perfect Azumarill for PvP, if you will. There are also other Azumarill spreads, by the way, that are extremely good. So if you want to know all the secrets of Azumarill, you should check out my video on that. Link in the description and up above here. But at any rate, maximize Azumarill, the most perfect bulk Azumarill for Great League PvP and it is still losing. Straight Icy Wind. This thing doesn't stop Icy Winding. You can only lower 
an attack you know, by four stages, it doesn't care. It does five Icy Winds because that's what it has to do in order to beat down the Azumarill. And as you can see in the one shield and in the two shield situation, in fact, Dugong's winning in the one two shield situation. That means Dugong only has to use one shield and Azumarill has to use two and Azumarill's still losing, man. It's still losing. Dugong is demolishing Azumarill. Now, that's one thing, of course, a lot of things can demolish Azumarill, but it demolishes Azumarill while also beating the Flying-type Pokémon and also packing a lot of threat on Grass-type Pokémon, which is pretty naughty. So does this mean that, uh, as far as, you know, my Great League simplified graphic goes, is this a Pokémon that just replaces Azumarill completely? Well, no, there's a lot of things that Azumarill can do that Icy Wind, Ice Shard, Dugong cannot do. Uh, for example, Hypno matchup lands the Hydro Pump, it can win that fight. Uh, same with Alola Marowak. Dugong just doesn't have that type of water type threat behind it. And then when it comes to fighting type matchups like the Axis Defense Form and like Vigoroth and uh, where are you? There you are, Metacham. <laughs> right? It can't tolerate fighting type attacks. Azumarill's got the fairy type resistance, so it's able to beat those guys. Oh yeah, Toxicroak, Scrafty, you guys are fighting types too. And then when it comes to steel type matchups, definitely can't tolerate those. Azumarill does have tools to overcome these types of matchups. So definitely not the most perfect Omega God Pokemon in all existence, but definitely an extremely powerful threat that you want to have on your team. Now when it comes to Dugong, I want to remind you guys, you want both the Ice Shard and the Icy Wind. That means you're going to need an Elite Fast TM if you don't already have a Legacy Ice Shard Dugong. On top of that, it's presumable, you know, we can assume that we're going to get an Elite Fast TM inevitably, right? Right now it just looks like we're getting the Charge TM, but we will get the Fast TM eventually. And uh, I think it'd be better if you were to get a better IV Dugong instead of just going with whatever legacy one you have. So I'd say for now, hold off, even if you do have the Ice Shard Dugong, unless it has really good PvP IVs already. If you don't know about PvP IVs, link up above and in the description to my video. Uh, lightly explain it to you guys, helping you understand what that is and resources to help you identify good PvP IVs. Um, so yeah, so yeah, hold out for the better seal of all into Dugong. And uh, when the time is right, you have both of the uh, TMs together, then I'd say go for it. Of course, there are other Pokemon that could steal your fancy as well. For example, we have Great League Thundershock Zapdos. Thundershock Zapdos was an event move. No Zapdos could be small enough to get into the Great League with Thundershock. Now we have that option. And if you check it out, it is a pretty interesting flying type Pokemon. It's got the drill peck, so it's able to handle grass types. And then it has the electric type threat, allowing it to threaten water type Pokemon, which is pretty nice. However, that electric type threat definitely isn't enough to move the Azumarill, which is a pretty big L. So overall, I'd say if we do get an elite fast TM, going for a Zapdos in the Great League might not be the best idea. What could be a better idea is going with the Shadow. Shadow Zapdos is kind of insane because it can beat Azumarill here with that Thundershock, which is pretty nice. So basically what was happening before was Zapdos's Thundershock and Thunderbolt damage wasn't enough to KO Azumarill. It'd get pretty close, but you know, at the end of the day, no potato. Thing throws an Ice Beam, you're dead, right? Um, well, Shadow Zapdos does have that edge. No problems there, it can beat it. Now I know that in the Elite TM list right now, there is the Legacy Discharge move for Zapdos. Uh, so there are some Legacy moves that were never actually implemented in the game. They were just in the Game Master for a while, and then before the Pokemon actually released, they changed the Game Master so it no longer had the move. Uh, in the current list right now, it appears that Discharge Zapdos is a possibility. Um, but they might remove it because it wasn't actually implemented in the game. And as I told you, some legacy moves have been removed from the list uh, before I made this video, and some are probably being removed right now. So before you spend any DMs, please check the game press list, make sure it's updated uh, so you're aware that you're not just whiffing an elite TM, because that would suck, right? At any rate, Discharge Zapdos, is that going to be an upgrade for it? Well, no, not exactly. Not even for the non-Shadow version either. And the reason why is because it just doesn't do enough damage. The critical thing that Zapdos needs to be doing for it to really be relevant in the Great League with the Thundershock Legacy move is uh, KOing Azumarill. And Discharge just isn't enough damage. And then when you go to the basic version, you know, Thunderbolt isn't enough damage, so obviously Discharge won't be enough damage. When you get to the Shadow one, Shadow Thunderbolt is enough damage, 
but Shadow Discharge, it's not enough damage. So it all comes down to your ability to KO Zimril, more or less. It can also do other things too, mind you, um, but that's a big one. And if you're missing it, then uh, yeah. Another cool thing that Shadow Zapdos here can do is defeat Umbreon. So Omega tanky type Pokemon now being felled by this Shadow Electric type Pokemon, which is pretty impressive. And of course, it's also beating Registeel. It's got that I resist both the Registeel's move swag going on. So think about Alolan Raichu, think about Galvantula. It's that same idea, but embodied in a flying type Pokemon now. But that is a nice perk nonetheless. A flying type that can beat grass types, it can beat Azumarill, it can beat Registeel. What more could you want from it? It also beats a lot of fighting type Pokemon too. Zapdos is one heck of a predator. PB Poke also points out that using Shadow Zapdos in this manner in the Ultra League is also very effective as well. Basically everything that isn't a Giratina is uh, gonna fear the Shadow Zapdos in the Ultra League. So got some swagger there too if you got a uh, powered up Shadow Zapdos already. If I had a Shadow Zapdos and I had Frustration gone, I'd probably just use it in the Great League. But it could be very threatening in the Ultra League as well. Then bumping up to the Master League here, we do have the Psy Strike Shadow Ball Mewtwo, which is an option. Now, if you've watched my uh, Master League Simplified video, you already know I'm not a big fan of Mewtwo in the Master League to begin with. I think it's a very good Pokemon, but I feel like it has a really high skill cap. And as we know, with like various glitches and stuff like that in the game, and the roulette nature of PvP to begin with in the Go Battle League, I just feel like using Mewtwo is just too inconsistent for my tastes and too inconsistent for me to promote to people. That said, if you are a Mewtwo enthusiast and you have been getting a lot of wins in the Master League with Mewtwo, uh, well yeah, having both Psy Strike and Shadow Ball opens up some more unique possibilities for you. You do close some doors in the process as well. If you had the Ice Beam, you'd have a more consistent time against like Dragonite and uh, Garchomp there. And if you had the Flamethrower, you'd probably have a better time against Melmetal and I guess a little bit Metagross too, Shadow Ball hits it for effectiveness as well, so kind of a horse apiece there. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, is you don't need to have both Psy Strike and Shadow Ball from you two to be good. You're losing some matchups with that combination. Uh, so if you have been using Mewtwo in the Master League and you've been losing pretty often with it, it's not really helping you out, and you're sitting at home thinking, man, if I just had both Psy Strike and Shadow Ball on Mewtwo at the same time, then my losses would become wins. I, I hate to break it to you, man but uh, Mewtwo's just not working out for you. But if you are somebody that does understand Mewtwo for the Master League really well, you've been getting good utility out of it, and you feel like this combo will open some new doors for you, then by all means, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. But it's definitely nothing I can promote at face value for uh, Mewtwo there. And then for the rest of PvP, there are a lot of other candidates that could maybe work out, but aren't my first picks. First one that comes to mind is the Wing Attack Charizard. I know a lot of people love that idea. Wing Attack plus Blast Burn. Wait, Legacy Wing Attack, mind you, and Legacy Blast Burn. Uh, community attack. But when it comes to the Great League, Charizard's not good. It's just not. I, I can't recommend you use it. And uh, Wing Attack isn't going to change that at all. And then when it comes to the Ultra League, where Charizard is actually good, Fire Spin is more important for Charizard to get its KOs. So it's like... I don't really see Wing Attack Charizard happening. The only people that really care about Wing Attack Charizard are people that are involved in the Sylph Arena. And if you're involved in the Sylph Arena, then there is definitely an insane old list of Pokemon that could be really good with a various uh, elite TMs involved. Wing Attack, Blast Burn, Charizard definitely being one of them, so. Other such unique, interesting, might be cool in a cup Pokemon to think about, uh, there is Icy Wind Seeking. We also got Dragon Pulse Lapras. We got Rock Slide Omastar and Fury Cutter Kabutops. Both of them could come in a shadow flavor as well. Then of course there's also Draco Meteor Dragonite, which could actually be pretty cool in Master League as well. I still feel in Master League, Outrage and Draco Meteor and Dragonite have roughly the same kind of performance. Right now I'm using Dragonite in the Master League and I'm using Outrage and I've never had a matchup where I really wanted that Outrage to be Draco Meteor to win it, you know what I mean? There's definitely been a lot of matches where I wish Dragonite was Dialga, but but that's a that's a whole other issue. No, no TM's gonna save me there, right? And then of course there's any of the starters that you have good IVs for, you know, like Frenzy Plant Venusaur or Meganium or uh, Hydro Cannon on a Swampert for Ultra League, for example. Those are also options, um, but I think you can trade for those pretty easily. And then of course in December we always get to you know evolve those moves again. So I don't think it's the highest priority in the universe, but 
hey, it might be something that you're into. Now, if there's any other cool uses for the Elite TMs that I have missed for PvP, you can definitely comment in the description and get us privy to them. But I feel like as far as, uh, you know, the important ones go, I think that's about it. You got Zapdos, you got Dugong, maybe Mewtwo, and that's about it. The raid section here is going to be pretty fast, pretty cut and dry. And before we talk about this, I just feel like the state of raids is really turbulent right now. Uh, using shadow Pokemon and spending a precious elite charge TM or fast TM resource on making raid Pokemon better, especially raid shadow Pokemon, it just seems like a risky endeavor, in my opinion. Right now, shadows are kind of the name of the game for a lot of different raid bosses, uh, you know, for being optimal in raid content. But, uh, I don't know. It just doesn't, doesn't sit well with me. I'd much rather focus on spending these all-powerful resources on PvP, where it has, like, a greater effect on your individual performance. Because when it comes to raids, you can still have, like, another person in the raid lobby with you, and then, bam, you can do the raid. No need for Shadow Swampert with Hydro Cannon. That said, it definitely pays to know what these Pokemon are, just just in case, just in case you are more about that. So for water type Pokemon, bam, Hydro Cannon, Shadow Swampert, Annihilating. Grass types, you have Shadow Venusaur, and if you happen to like Shadow Torterra, a bit better. Uh, the difference between them isn't that large. Venusaur a bit better, but Shadow Torterra is still there, uh, just behind it. When it comes to fire, uh, Shadow Moltres is still on top, but the difference between it and Shadow Charizard isn't that much, so if you already maxed out a Shadow Charizard and you're just like, I love using Shadow Charizard so much, well hey, now you can give it Blast Burn, it's going to be that much better. And don't think Shadow Moltres' swag ends there. As a Flying-type Pokemon with the Legacy Sky Attack, so this is a, uh, you know, Elite TM move right there, uh, it definitely soars ahead of every single Flying-type in existence. It's just way ahead of its former self, which, is, which was on top before, but now the Shadow Self is definitely on top. And I think it's going to be an insane long time before anything can get on Shadow Moltres' level as far as being a Flying-type raid attacker goes. Now, how relevant is Flying-type damage in raids? Uh, not really, but there's number one, and this is the most number one out of all the number ones, so might be something to think about. For dragons, we have the Legacy Outrage Shadow Salamence on top. Now, of course, once, you know, Shadow Rayquaza becomes a thing, then, you know, Shadow Salamence is going to be packing its bags a little bit. So I feel like as more Shadows come out, Shadow Salamence can be outdone, probably will be outdone. But for the time being, Shadow Outrage Salamence, name of the game. And then for Steel-type Pokemon, how could we forget about Shadow Meteor Mash Metagross being the best Steel-type Pokemon by way too much. You know, Flash Cannon Shadow Metagross? Nah, man, the OG Meteor Mash Metagross, beating that guy out. Um, but Shadow, Shadow with the Meteor Mash, that's definitely a new world order right there. And then for Rock types, you do have the Shadow Smackdown Tyranitar. Rampardos, the OG Rampardos, is better than it in terms of DPS, but oddly enough, the Shadow Tyranitar is more tanky than it. So if you want a thicker Rock type Pokemon doing big Rock type stuff, well, Shadow Tyranitar is an option there. But of course, Rampardos is better. You don't have to use a super legacy Omega Elite. That's the word. You don't have to use an Elite TM to get Rampardos up to snuff. And then of course there could be a Shadow Rampardos or a Shadow Rhyperior or something like that in the future, making Shadow Tyranitar look a little bit smaller. So and that's basically it for raids. There might be a type I overlooked, but I kind of doubt it as far as uh, elite TMs are concerned. Of course, there's other shadow Pokemon that dominate, like, you know, Shadow Electivire on top of Electrix, and then Shadow Gardevoir on top of Fairy types, but you don't need an elite TM for those guys. And there you have it, the most optimal Pokemon to use elite TMs on. Now, of course, this is the list right now, but the future is coming. We have more event moves that could pop up. We got more legacy moves that can pop up. And if you already evolved the Pokemon getting these new event attacks, well, they can't get them outside of these elite TMs. So I think it could be in your best interest if you don't already have like a super optimal pick and you're like, yes, this one, and it's going to be so powerful. My Shadow Zapdos will be unmatched. You know, unless you got that going on, I think it'd be best to hoard onto these resources until something even hotter comes along or something that's more specific to your needs. For example, Rora Time Dialga. You already maxed out a Dialga. Do you want to max out another Dialga? Because Rora Time Dialga comes out and now it's better than your Dialga. Bam! 
Elite Charge TM. You don't even have to think about it now. Precipice Blades Groudon could also be big in the Master League as well. And then it doesn't, it's not just Master League Pokemon with signature moves either. There's also the Community Day Attacks and uh, the possibility of double Community Day Attacks. When it comes to those Community Day votes, I know that Blastoise was floated as a possible voting option for that. So what if Hydro Cannon and the new Community Day Attack that Blastoise have, that combination, is the most optimal Blastoise moveset for PvP, and all of a sudden it's insane. It beats Azumarill, it beats Grass, it beats Registeel, it beats your mom. Um, that might be too dark. Uh, yeah, then you're gonna want that. So, what I'm saying is, Dugong, Zapdos, Mewtwo, they look cool. You wanna TM them right away, I bet. But saving that limited resource, might be cooler down the line. At any rate, that covers it. If you got any questions on this content, comment below. Let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout-out to these Patreon supporters. If you want to support the Swagman on Patreon, I got a link in the description for that.